Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can go about answering a question like this by looking at it from the modulus point of view. And in the video that follows, I'll show you how to do the same question by another method where we compare the real and imaginary parts. So what we've got is for the transformation w equaling 1 over 3 minus z, z not equaling 3, show that the image under the transformation t of the mod of z equaling 3 in the z plane is a line l in the w plane. And we've got a sketch l on an argon diagram. OK, well, to start off, let's put down the transformation that we're given. That is w equals 1 divided by 3 minus z. And for this, what I'm going to do is make z the subject from this equation. And then, since we know the mod of z is equal to 3, I'm going to develop a modulus equation. So if I multiply, first of all, both sides by 3 minus z, we've therefore got w multiplied by 3 minus z is going to be equal to 1. And if we expand the bracket, we therefore have 3w minus wz equals 1. And if we add wz to both sides and subtract 1 from both sides, we end up with wz equaling 3w minus 1. And now if I divide both sides by w, we therefore have z equals 3w minus 1 all over w. Now if we take the modulus to both sides, we've got the modulus of z is going to equal then the modulus of 3w minus 1 divided by w. And when we have a division, and a mod round our fraction, it's exactly the same as taking the modulus of both the top and the bottom separately. So that's the same as the modulus then of 3w minus 1 divided by the modulus of w. And if I multiply now both sides by the modulus of w, we end up with the modulus of z multiplied by the modulus of w equals the modulus of 3w minus 1. Now, if we let w, let's just put it up here, let w equal u plus iv, then if we substitute this into here, we know that the modulus z, we're told, is equal to 3, and so therefore we have 3 times the modulus of w, which is going to be u plus iv, okay, for w, equals the modulus of 3w minus 1. So we've got three lots of u plus iv, and then minus the 1. Now, what I'm going to do next is group up the real and imaginary part. So on the left here, this is already done. We've got 3 times the modulus of u plus iv, okay, equals, and if I expand the brackets, we've got the modulus of 3u, and if I group that up with the real number there, minus 1, just put that in brackets, and then we've got plus 3iv, or 3vi. Now, what I'm going to do next is square both sides so that I can get rid of the modulus sign. So if we just put that in square brackets, all of the left-hand side, I'm going to square that, and I'm going to square the right-hand side. So squaring both sides gives me 3 squared, which is 9, and then it's going to be u squared plus v squared. And then on the right here, we're going to have, this is going to be equal to the real part here, squared, 3u minus 1 all squared, 
plus the imaginary part all squared. So that's going to be 3v all squared or 9v squared. So if I expand the bracket here on the left, I've now got therefore 9u squared plus 9v squared. And if we expand on the right hand side here, squaring the bracket out gives me 9u squared, twice the product of these two terms, that's going to be minus 6u, and then square that last term is going to be plus 1, and then we've got plus the 9v squared. Now if I simplify this, take away 9u squared from both sides, and 9v squared from both sides, we therefore get 0 equals 1 minus 6u. And from this, we can see that if we make u the subject by adding 6u to both sides and dividing by 6, we end up with u equaling 1 sixth. So what has actually happened? Well, we had the mod of z equaling 3. So if we were to draw that, that represents a circle of radius 3 units, just marking the 3 units there, okay? And what we've now got is that under this transformation, w equaling 1 over 3 minus z, we've got in the w plane the line L, where we've got u equals 1 sixth. So if I was to draw 1 sixth in a line like this, okay? That's what we're going to have. This is going to be 1 sixth. Now it's interesting to follow this up with noticing how the locus of Z going around this circle links up to the movement of the points along this line here on the W plane. I'll show you by way of a table what's happening. If we took some key points for z, z equaling the real number 3 over here, then 3i, that would be this point here, then the real number z equaling minus 3, then minus 3i, and then back to 3. Let's see what values we get for w. Well, when z equals 3, what we're going to have is w is going to be equal to 1 over 3 minus 3. In fact, z is not really allowed to be 3. So that's because we're going to get 1 divided by 0, if that's the case. And 1 divided by 0 is undefined. But what happens is, if we take just a value slightly above this 3 here, let's just indicate that with just, say, a positive, OK? 3, just above the x-axis here then what happens is we end up with 1 divided by a positive value, just close to 0. And that gives us a value that is going to tend towards positive infinity. We'll talk about this in a moment. But when z equals 3i, we end up with w equaling 1 over 3 minus 3i. Let's just mark it in here, 1 divided by 3 minus 3i. And if you multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate 3 plus 3i, what happens is this sim simplifies to 1 sixth plus 1 sixth i. Try it out, OK? And where's this point? Well, when z equals 3i, which is up here, we've got w equaling 1 sixth plus 1 sixth i. And so that's going to be a point, say, there. So what's happening is that when z started from just beyond 3 here, w was on this line here, extending out to infinity. But as we go round this arc of the circle, W comes down the line until we get to this point, 1 sixth plus 1 sixth i, when z equals 3i. Now look what happens as we come around this stretch here. When z equals minus 3, we end up with 1 
over 3 minus minus 3. In other words, 1 sixth. And that is this point here, okay, on the real axis. And then when z equals minus 3i, we end up with 1 over 3 minus minus 3i. In other words, 1 over 3 plus 3i. And if we multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of 3 plus 3i, in other words, 3 minus 3i, we end up with 1 sixth minus 1 sixth i. And that complex number is down here. And finally, if we work our way round here towards 3, then what happens is we end up with w equaling 1 over 3 minus 3, 1 over 0. Well, if we take a value just below the x-axis, let's say that we put a minus there, just below the x-axis, we get 1 divided by a negative value close to 0. And this turns out to be approaching negative infinity. So what's happening is that as z starts just from the 3 here, just above, okay, and goes round the circle like this, we've got w coming from way up here all the way down through the line and down out the other side here. Okay, so I'm just giving you some idea anyway on how these two relate to one another. Under this transformation then, w equals 1 over 3 minus z. And as I say, the method that I've used is just to consider the modulus of z equaling 3. So in the other video that follows this, what I do is show you an alternative method then where I compare real and imaginary parts. So I hope you'll look at that and then you can compare the two different methods and make a decision on which one you would prefer to do.